Okay, hi everyone. Um, I really don't know why I am recording this because about two and a half people may or may not watch it. Uh, but it is what it is and I thought it would be something that I could do to try and pass some time and to help share a, a bit of a passion that is reignited in me recently. Uh, I've just got back to Aberdeen, uh, Aberdeen City from the, the house that I own in Durham, which I'm trying to sell, uh, but most of my possessions are still in Durham. Uh, and I have two Skoda Fabias worth of my stuff here. Um, a good half of one of those trips was just the cat and her furniture, which is great for her. It was not great for me. I didn't have a kettle or any way to make coffee apart from boiling some water on a hob for a bit, which I guess it's a first world problem, but for a British person, a kettle's quite a, a stable essential. Um, anyway, I wanted to do a set of videos uh, talking about music. Um, music is something that I've always been into. I started playing instruments when I was about five, six years old. Uh, my mum really wanted me and my brother to know how to read music and play an instrument. She was never able to and she really insisted upon we had to learn. And I wanted to make a set of videos. I don't know how many, it entirely depends on who may watch and also what I have to talk about. But I wanted to just share some information um, from my own experience of playing these instruments uh, about a set of instruments that tend to be quite ignored and neglected. And you know, if somebody says they're a musician, you think, oh, they play the piano, maybe they play the guitar. Yeah, I'm a bassist. Yeah, I'm a drummer. Uh, I'm a concert pianist. And then I'll come along, I play brass. Oh, you can see the cat as well. And yeah, I play brass, the sexier of the musical instruments. I've been playing brass since I was about eight. I do play the keyboard as well. Uh, I wish I could play the piano, but my left hand doesn't know how to do anything apart from chords. Uh, I am trying, I'm gonna, when I liberate my keyboard, I'll get back into that as well. But I've been playing brass for a number of years and the brass instrument that I play at the moment is this. So this is a flugelhorn. And the flugelhorn, I mean, it's gorgeous. What a beautiful, beautiful instrument this is. I absolutely love my flugel. I actually grew up playing uh, a, an instrument in the same family as the flugel. I used to play the tenor horn, sometimes known as the E flat horn. Uh, it's got a bigger mouthpiece. The biggest difference, and I just realized <laughs> that a lot of these videos are going to sound vaguely pornographic because of how you talk about technical things with brass instruments um, but the bell or the bell end of your instrument uh, for the flugel it points forwards for the tenor horn it points upwards and a tenor horn is a small baritone which is a small euphonium which is a small tuba effectively there's other differences between them but in terms of how you can picture a tenor horn it looks like a me really really tiny miniature tuba um, the flugelhorn looks like a strangely shaped cornet or a, an even strangely shaped trumpet and it's in the same pitch, plays the same pitch as the trumpet and the cornet. So this plays in B flat. The tenor horn I used to play plays in E flat, it's a bit bigger than this instrument. And I've been playing flugel for a number of years now and I love it so much. I did take quite a number of years off and I am very rusty because I live in a block of flats and I lived in the block of flats for a while and when I bought my house I started playing again because oh great I'm not irritating all of my neighbours and now I've moved back to a block of flats I'm very mindful of that and how I play I also have to play with this in this is a practice mute and you shove it up the bell end of your instrument um it's great for muffling the noise it's not great in terms of it completely changes how the instrument sounds when you play it. And it also very annoyingly changes how you play the instrument because you've got to push more air through the instrument in order to combat the fact that you've got a stopper, basically a cork stuck into the end of your instrument. So it's great for practicing. Um, it's not great for much else. And one of the things I've been doing recently, and this is quite sad, 
and I don't know if I'm going to record any of these because I am terribly critical of, of how I play and how I kind of do anything. Um, but what I'm aiming on doing is, and I've started it, I've got some music composition software on my computer and I am currently transposing a bunch of songs that I quite like. Um, it's going to be, it's an interesting set of stipulations that you have to have on music to transpose it, particularly for brass. Um, brass instruments have got a very limited range in terms of how many octaves you can cover in one instrument. And it can become quite problematic if you've got a beautiful piece of music, but the range is massive. You might be able to play it on a piano or a keyboard or a violin, but you're gonna struggle on brass. So I'm trying to find songs that don't cover too big of a range, but are also musical enough that they'll be vaguely interesting if played on brass. And I'm currently trying to transpose them into a suitable range, um, write the music out. And it's a nice way to pass some time because I don't have the internet in this flat yet. So this video may be going up when I record it. It might be going up when I get into work. And I can hop onto the Wi-Fi. Um, but I don't have the internet. I don't have the internet here until the end of December, which is probably one of the reasons why I've been getting really much more into music, because a way to pass the time on an evening. Um, I don't know if I'm going to record any vocals on any of these pieces. It depends what the instruments sound like and also depends upon how self-confident I'm feeling in terms of my own abilities with anything, because I'm quite critical of myself but I wanted to just talk about flugels so I've, I've mentioned it's a B flat instrument it plays the same pitch as the trumpet and the cornet the trumpet's got a much harsher sound which is great for an orchestra if you need a note that pierces through your orchestra trumpet's a perfect instrument for that flugel wouldn't do that um, flugel sounds a bit more like a french horn which I can also play uh, French horn's interesting, it's, um, it's in the key of F, you play in F, and you do indeed have to, and again, pornographic, you have to shove your hand up the bell of your instrument to play it, and how you move your hand can alter the pitch slightly. Um, thankfully, I don't have to do that with the flugel horn, it makes it a lot better. Um, the flugel's beautiful, beautiful sounding instrument when you don't play it with a practice mute in. It's very mellow very warm sound um it sounds like you're getting a hug from a brass instrument i think it's the mellowest of all of the brass instruments the the other the rest of the horn section the three tenor horns they do sound quite mellow themselves but i don't think anything can beat the warmth that you get from a flugel horn which is one of the reasons why i love playing it other reason why i like playing the flugel is if you're in a brass band which is the only band really that you'll find a flugel the parts are a bit more interesting than the tenor horn parts. Tenor horn parts are about a bit umparish. You do a lot of support work, but very little tune work. But you do do tune with the flugel. Downsides of the flugel, they can be a pain to play in tune. Pitching issues on the flugel are very, very common. Um, it's got a trigger valve. You can see it just here. So what this does, it connects to my third valve. And sometimes if I'm playing my third valve, which is this one here, you have to trigger with this finger. And what this does is flatten the note off because you're creating more tube for the air to go through and it can flatten notes. You sometimes need to do that. There's a few notes on flugels and it depends how you play with the rest of the band and how you as an individual player play, where you have to trigger certain notes. Other interesting things with brass instruments. Uh, so the, the trumpet, cornet, flugel, tenor horn, I believe baritone. Um, very interesting, oh, no pornographic again. The fingering is the same for all of these instruments. So physically, the keys that you press down for different notes are identical for all of those instruments, which is what allowed me to move from the tenor horn to the flugel with no problem whatsoever. I had to get used to a much smaller mouthpiece and I had to get used to having to push more air through the instrument to reach higher notes. Um, but the fingering was identical. The interesting thing about fingering with a brass instrument is not only 
the case so if you play an open note so none of the valves down you can hit multiple notes it's not a case of just pushing more air through the instrument to reach a higher note it's all to do with um, things like lip tension how you're pushing air through your diaphragm will help you pitch um, so there's a whole bunch of notes you can play open, there's a whole bunch of notes therefore you can play with the first valve, with the first and second valve, with the middle valve. It also means that there's certain notes, typically in the higher register, not in the lower register, where one note you've got multiple options of how you play it. So top G for example, you can play it open, which is usually the convention, but if you find you're drifting a bit sharp, you can play it first and third, will help you hit, hit that same upper G. Um, this gives you a great amount of options so when you get used to how you play and how you sound in an ensemble you're able to make little adjustments and notations on your music to usually is um, aid memoirs to help you remember oh I'm a bit sharp on that note possibly if you've come from a higher note you can be a little bit sharp sometimes so a little reminder to play something first and third rather than open can be quite useful um, and I might try and play briefly like two bars with the practice mutant so you can hear what it sounds like. At some point, I'm hoping to be able to record the odd bit without the practice mutant, but I'm mindful that it's relative, it's not the earliest, it's, it's dark outside, but I've also, I don't, I don't want to irritate my neighbors just after I've moved in. We can, we can try and see, we can try and see. Like I say, I'm quite rusty. At the moment, I'm getting my lip back in. Uh, to be able to play for longer. I'm very much looking forward to January when I am joining a brass band in Aberdeen. They're broken up for Christmas at the moment, so I can't really pop along. Um, but come January, they are happy for an extra flugel player to join. So I'm gonna go along and um, that is gonna be an amazing way to get a decent amount of practice in without the need for this. But anyway, let's let's see if I can pitch watch because I'm recording I'm gonna absolutely mess up but we'll see in there because the next note's quite high and I can hear myself splitting so I won't subjugate you to that um but yeah that's what a normally beautiful mellow instrument sounds like when you shove a cork up its bell end I hope that was vaguely interesting I'm going to try and record some more um, maybe one of these days I'll record some of the music that I've been transposing for brass very crudely transposing for brass uh, so that you can, mostly for me, let's be honest, um, but if it's not terrible, I might upload it somehow. Um, but I hope that was, yeah, vaguely interesting. Um, and I hope everyone's doing well and isn't, particularly if you're in the UK, you're not freezing your behind off in this beautiful weather that we've been having recently. And uh, take care. Have a lovely rest of your day. Bye.